From time to time, we hear the phrase, if I were a betting person, and since we are Catholic Christians and find no need to gamble, let's experiment a little. If you were a betting person, how many of you would bet that I would probably give an awesome homily today? And there are not many betting people here, that's fine. <laughs> If you were a betting person, how many of you would bet that the sun would rise tomorrow? Okay, you have more hands for that, huh? Okay, very good. If you were a betting person, how many of you would bet that you would have a successful future? Okay. If you were a betting person, how many of you would bet that you would not lose your jobs tomorrow? Yeah, things are starting to get real. If you are a betting person, how many of you would bet that your car will start perfectly in one week? If you are a betting person, how many of you would bet that Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett will still be billionaires in the next hour? If you were a betting person, how many of you would bet that the greatest city on earth, yep, Houston, Texas, would become the third largest city in a year after sitting at number four for such a long time? <laughs> That's a good man. Very good. We think we can predict, we think we can be sure, uh, but can we do so with 100% accuracy? The answer, friends, is a resounding no. We did not set things in motion. We did not bring things to life, not even our kids, or else we would have probably given them a good mix of good behavior, and they may have it 100% of the time. We do not know what will happen in the next two or three hours, even as much as we would like to predict. It is a huge guess. But we are not God. In fact, we are completely dependent on his own action and his own volition, an action and will that allows us to experience life in patterns, mannerisms, judgments, with a hope or even expectation for a particular future. But what happens when that future doesn't come to pass exactly as we like it, exactly as we predict, and exactly the way we want? Do we despair? Or do we recall that the world was given order well before we came into being? That the world we know is a place where we humans experience fulfillment? Said fulfillment does not come from ourselves because we didn't make ourselves. Said fulfillment comes from that which gives life and from that which puts things in order. He is the expectation that our hearts seek. Why not bet on him? Betting on other things will make you lose every once in a while. And if we're honest, often, betting on God brings you eternal life with him. You and I can attest to this fact as we reflect upon the people of Israel who were rescued by God through Moses. He rescues them and yet empowers them not to forcibly love him, but to come to that realization naturally. They were enslaved, yet God rescues them God demonstrates his love intentionally for them, thus bringing and ensuring safety and security because the people belong to God. They are set out, special among many. They are a holy people, a holy nation, who intentionally remain loved by God. You would think that they would remember this instead of making a molten calf out of the gold that they can find. Here's where we human beings rely on our own self-will and own knowledge 
instead of the entity that creates and sustains. And we can see this in society. For example, Bruce Willis was raised Lutheran, but in his adult years, he mentioned that modern religion was a dying form. Javier Bardem, uh, who played the villain in the James Bond movie Skyfall, mentioned, I don't believe in God, I believe in Al Pacino. Amber Heard, though raised Catholic, does not believe in God as she somehow still feels, in her words, strangely compelled to fight against the atheist label. As a young lady, she lost her friend unexpectedly. However, friends, as St. Paul describes in his letter to the Romans, it is Christ that justifies. It is Christ that redeems. His death is that which saves, and participation in his love and God's love is what truly brings life. We human beings fall, and God saves us. We choose what brings death and then get mad at God for not helping soon enough when things just don't go our way. We oftentimes get frustrated and we despair, yet Christ extends his hand of mercy for us. Truly, friends, the only thing that makes sense in this world, the only thing that we can depend upon is the merciful love of God that we all hope for, especially when we are disappointed. Our bodies and our souls are wired for it. Therefore, continue this mission of God. Live your lives with courage and perseverance. You are here for a reason. And that reason, my brothers and sisters, no matter the creed or background, no matter your education or trade, no matter how well-versed you are or shy, that reason is to glorify the God that made us and to each be illustrations of this love, illustrations of God's hope, a hope that endures because there is no reason for people in the world to smile, no reason for people in the world to multiply, no reason for people in the world to seek better if there was not a better to be had. The devil wants you to settle for what you do see, but God has a glory waiting for you that you cannot see, at least not yet. However, in the meantime, the glory that you still cannot see is the courage that he has given you, the perseverance, his love, his mercy, his goodness, wisdom, and the list goes on and on. The celebrities we mentioned are at the moment comfortable in settling, but imagine the power and inspiration they can share if only they relied upon God's love just a little bit more instead of being disappointed in this thing called life. St. Alphonsus Liguori once mentioned, that Mary was the most perfect among the saints, only because she was always perfectly united to the will of God. Fortunately, his will for you is far more imaginable than what you and I can quantify or qualify. His will for you is greatness, and you will not achieve it on your own because your own perception of greatness is far lower than what you think exists for yourself. Therefore, friends, you may ask the following, Father Houston, is this really achievable? My response would be, to be Christian is not a mark of living without trouble, but a mark of living without allowing the trouble, pain, and hardships to diminish who you are. You are a child of God and destined for glory. Own that. Thrive on that. Better yet, you can bet on that.